video is brought to you by our channel partner, Rayboot. Their software allows you to fix a ton of issues on iOS. It'll let you upgrade or downgrade iOS as a whole. Enter recovery mode. It has 150 plus issues for iOS that can be resolved. It'll reset your iOS devices, permanently erase data if you need, and a ton of other options if your phone is frozen, if it is stuck in different modes you don't want it to be, if there's excess battery drain, boot loops, it'll take care of it all for you. Thanks for partnering with us on today's video. All right, so three days into using iOS 26 beta 8 or iOS 26 public beta 5, whichever you're running, same build number, and we have some takeaways. First things first, if you're interested in these wallpapers, like a lot of you always comment, make sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to get notified when our Apple Rewind goes live. Traditionally, it's on Sunday. It might change to Saturdays. We'll have to see. But if you're interested in those, we will recap everything that went on for the week in Apple and drop those wallpaper links as well. So having said all that, let's talk about what everyone always wants to know, and that is going to be battery life right off the bat. And Beta 8 is actually inconsistent. So I'm sorry to say I have to jump in and get the bad news out of the way. I have had very inconsistent days of usage where I've had to definitely re-up my battery to get through the day. Now, a little bit of background. We are over 365 cycles. Let me actually go to battery health to show you. 366 full cycles now and 95% max capacity. So it'll all be relative to your usage and what your battery health is. But we are not getting as great of battery life here as we were even on beta 7. So by no means is it bad. It is definitely just not up to par with what iOS 18 offered even at this point in time. And then also performance wise, let's go ahead and jump back into Geekbench and show you these scores. And as you can see here, we did get a single core score of 3456 and a multi-core score of 8311, which is slightly under single core from the beta seven and then a little bit higher on beta seven for single core goes. So multi score is a little lower, single core is a little higher. Again, in day to day usage, you won't see any issues here. Jumping around, everything does work as you would anticipate. Jumping in here in calendars, just kind of scrolling through. Everything has been very fluid. Those new animations look great. Everything is performing like you would expect. If you are a gamer and like to play games, we play Clash Royale quite a bit. If you jump into this, everything does operate as you would expect. I've had no issues, no hiccups, no glitches. Game mode works as you would expect. Also, you can pull down if I can and launch it if it is active. For some reason, it didn't kick in here. Just one of those random glitches. And speaking of glitches, for some reason, we are still experiencing that one on the control center when you swipe up for the first time. And did you see it there? It just hesitated a little bit. It's still not as smooth. But again, like we've said in past videos, this seems to be unique to us. I'm not sure why. If you are getting that same random glitch, comment down below and let us know. But aside from these very few minimal issues, everything has been performing very nice. Haven't had any issues at all. Jumping around in the App Store, perfectly fine. And then if you are a big fan of Apple Music and really do like the new liquid glass design, I'm happy to tell you that it has not changed too much. It is still working like it has been. Very tweaked, very active, and feels more alive, if that makes any sense. One thing I do want to talk about now is the release schedule and what to really expect. So Apple just yesterday did tell us that we have officially received our launch date for the next Apple event, and that is going to be on September 9th. So this confirms a couple things for us. First is I would not expect another beta next week. Beta 8 and public beta 5 should be it for iOS 26. Having said that, on the 9th now, after the Apple event, the RC or release candidate version of these builds should be live. So you can assume around 3 Eastern time on the 9th, the RC to come out. And then on the 5th or so of the week after, we should receive the public release of iOS 26. Crazy to believe that it is already here. But yeah, we definitely are. What's awesome about that is the next week or possibly even a few days later, we will get the first beta of iOS 26.1. And with that, we don't even have a clue 
what we might be getting. So kind of exciting to not know what's coming, but if Apple maintains the process they did for iOS 26, where the first beta had the majority of the new features, we could be in store for a nice surprise and some new features in just a couple of weeks. If you are thinking about getting either the new Apple Watches or any new Apple device, iPhone 17 series coming out, you can expect those pre-orders to be right there on the 12th, the Friday after the event, and the launch a week later on the 19th. So that should give you an idea of how to plan and what to expect in the coming weeks from the world of Apple. Aside from that, should you install this on your primary device? At this point, this is pretty much feature complete and as stable as we're probably gonna get. So I think it's okay. I always caveat this with, if you think you are going to be using your device, your primary device as your main driving device, and you wanna put this beta on it, it might give you issues with battery life, but performance is okay. So if you're around a charger and your battery life isn't a big deal, it should be okay. Now, if you're wanting to install this on an older device, so iPhone 11, 12, 13, something like that, I've seen videos where it is running pretty smooth. Liquid glass does give it that fresh coat of paint, but I always pause and make you think again about that. I don't think it's ideal for older devices still, because again, even if we're having issues on our iPhone 16, imagine what you're gonna see on an older device that's just not as optimized for this. And then even for the iPhone 16 people out there, Keep in mind, these again are optimized now for iPhone 17. So just something to keep in mind. Ultimately, it is up to you, but that is kind of where I stand on that. I will say the heating on the phone has seemed to be non-existent. It doesn't really overheat too much. Every once in a while, I will get that overheat notification. But the biggest issue is when I'm trying to charge this device, it will say it will have to wait to cool down before charging again even if the phone is not that warm. So that's kind of different. iOS 26, public beta four and beta seven for developers. I didn't have this issue. At the beginning of the beta cycles, we had it all the time. So it's kind of strange why that is back in beta eight. Hopefully that'll be fixed in the RC. But aside from that, that's it for this one, guys. Thumbs up this video. Let me know down below how you're feeling about iOS 26 being feature complete. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.